Welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I am Connor Williams and we are back with another 24-7 news report. Um, these don't come as often as they do now, just because now the transfer windows died down, the rumour mills died down and the news sort of has died down slightly. And now the season's begun, we have a lot more content to push. The podcasts, the extra time, the previews, the starting 11s, you know all the, you know, you know, if you're, if you're a little subscriber to the channel, you'll know the content we push out. If you're not, what are you doing? Sort your life out. Only joking. But do subscribe. Um, yeah, but like I said, this is a 24-7 news report. If you've watched it all over the summer and you've watched me do them, you know the drill. We start with our headline news and our headline news is that Everton are still interested in Newcastle United midfielder Sean Longstaff. And a talk of the move is coming this coming January is intensifying. Newcastle are keen to ensure they don't lose the midfielder for free and could sanction a move in January. This has come from Chronicle, New York, um, Newcastle United Football Club. Um, for me, it's a no. It's a no. I, Sean Longstaff, I don't rate him. I think his brother's better and I don't think his brother's awfully brilliant either. I, I think Newcastle probably see it as trying to get some money, but from what I can gather, Newcastle aren't desperate to keep him either. I don't see them throwing contracts at him. If New, if he's not good enough for Newcastle, in my opinion, and I know some people might say this isn't always the case, and it isn't, it's contextual, from what I've seen about him, if Newcastle don't want him, why are we after him? Um, I mean, I'm not going to jump on the, you know, the sort of, but Newcastle, I know Benitez managed them, but we don't want to turn into Newcastle. We, I don't want, I don't want Sean Longstaff, <clears throat> because I don't, and also I don't think he adds a lot. I said it in the, uh, live stream I did the other night he's no better than Tom Davis he's no better than what we've got so why are we going for him and Tom Davis splits this fan's face his opinion and he's no better than that and Tom Davis is a local lad so maybe there's a bit bit of a you know he's saving grace there either way this this for me is a no you want midfielders if we're going to bring them in that will be as good if not slightly slightly worse than the core eight, um not as good sorry is, is probably the right word to use not as good not worse than Allen and the core so then they're pushing they're pushing and if they get injured there's a chance that that player can keep his place in the team with a good performance or most importantly when if they get injured when they get injured you won't miss them as much because you've got a player who is of the caliber or slightly below of them I'm telling you now if we stuck Allen and the core and the core got injured and we stick long staff there we will notice a drop off in quality and for me that is the wrong reason to buy midfielders you want midfielders who when you bring them in you will go okay there's a slight drop off maybe but not massively i think we will notice i think people will then go onto twitter and go long staff's not the core eh? and that's that's the you know he's not the core eh? personally this is just my personal opinion obviously and you might disagree and you'll let me know in the comments down below but I think we need to be aiming a little bit higher than Longstaff, and I know someone's going to say financial fair play, but we can hold that. We don't need to get him in January. Our midfield is okay. It's not the major worry in our squad. Just wait till the summer. If we need a midfielder, then go after it. But none of this buying every player that Benitez managed at Newcastle. I'm not a massive fan of that as a transfer strategy, uh, and I just don't think Longstaff's very good. Um, next we have Crystal Palace are interested in Everton midfielder Tom Davis and are keeping tabs on his situation after uncertainty over his future that's come from Footy Insider 24-7 and the uncertainty linking onto the headline will be that if we get uh, long staff then Tom Davis looks like he might not be needed he's surplus to requirements <laughs> this is probably my blue tinted spectacles here I'd rather Tom Davis at the club um, I know he splits fan bases and there's people going, what does he actually bring to the team and all this. I actually really like him. I think there's something in him and managers have seen something in him because every manager we've had has put some faith in him. Uh, last year, I think he played one of his better seasons um, in a role that, you know, sort of a deep line playmaker, sort of a deeper role. And I think that went okay for him. Obviously, I think he, when he first burst onto the scene with that City goal, um, I think it looked like he could have been more of a box-to-box, -box, but that's not how it's worked out. Um, I actually thought he played all right last season. I like him. He, he's a local lad who plays for the badge, which I know people will say is too sentimental, but I think it still counts for something nowadays, um, especially in the days where people have said, you know, there's too many people come to Everton who are a bit mercenary, come for the paycheck. It, you know, 
in the same way you can't say that and then when there's one when you say about one lad oh he loves the club then go oh yeah but that's sentiment and it's rubbish you know at, at least he plays and he wants to be at Everton um, and I think he's good I, if, if he was absolute rubbish I'd say you know that's not an excuse but I do think he's a good player um, he's not Alan and Decore like I've said but he is still a good player and I don't think he's I think he's slightly better than Longstaff, actually. I'm going to say I think he's better, slightly better than Sean Longstaff, so it makes no sense to get him out to bring Longstaff in, in my opinion. Like I said, you might disagree, so let me know in the chat, uh, in the in the comments, sorry. Um, we next have Everton tried to sign the best player in Portugal this summer. Uh, Luis Diaz is uh, a name that will bring up much feeling for all of us. We were really excited. Uh, we offered James Rodriguez, uh, James Rodriguez, as a potential swap to Porto, but the two clubs failed to agree for the 24-year-old. Uh, Diaz appears to have put disappointment of his proposed move falling firmly behind him, as he uh, has played really, really well. And he started to catch attention um, from a lot of clubs. Unfortunately, one of those clubs is Barcelona. Uh, Everton could miss out on him, it's set to be claimed. Uh, the Porto winger was close to moving, like I said. Um, now, according to Marca in Spain, Barcelona are looking to sign Diaz in the coming months, having identified him as a target. The report goes on to say Diaz would cost 30 um, euros, 25 million, and is on the radar of the La Liga club in January. <clears throat> Obviously, 20, 25 million is not that much money because the other day I read that it was going to be stratospherical, which to me is like 60, 70 million. Um, but if they're going to let him go to Barcelona for that cheap, you could argue. We can afford that probably in the summer, maybe maybe in January with the financial fair play because apparently we've got money for Rodriguez, maybe. Um, the bigger worry would be that Barcelona are, are a draw. Still, still, I know I know you're going to say Koeman, the mess they're in. They are still a draw and he probably still will look at that as his big move. Um, and I honestly don't see Koeman being there much lot like in the next two seasons. Um Apparently there's some sort of they can't kind of pay his, his release clause or something. They can't afford to sack him or something. I don't know what's going on with Barcelona, but I don't see Kuman being there very long. Um, and it's you know that's sort of what he'll look at. Hopefully this is all wrong and he'll look at it in the in the January and go I'll get better games at Everton. Everton seems to be you know the better team to be to <laughs> seems to be the better run at this minute. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. But. Uh, it does. I have this feeling we are going to miss out on him because it's Barcelona. And like I said, regardless of the mess they currently look like they're in, they are still a big draw. Um, next, we move on, and Everton have released the latest Bramley Moore doc update uh, as the next stage nears. S surprised they haven't waited for some bad <laughs> some bad news before releasing this like they normally do. But um, Everton have released the latest update on Bramley Moore doc as the club edge closer to starting the infill of the site. Uh, the Blues have confirmed that the operation to rehouse the marine wildlife currently living in the water will be completed by the end of this week. Uh, this has been a priority for the club as they prepare to move on to the next steps of their state-of-the-art waterfront stadium and they've confirmed the infill of the dock is nearing. The infill of the dock will take place over the coming months as um, has seen pipe work laid bringing in circa 500,000 cubic metres of sand drenched from the Irish Sea to displace the water currently in the dock. Uh, obviously that's great news not just in terms of its movement in the stadium. It's a big job that needed to be done, obviously. Um, but it's great news as well. They can house the marine life somewhere else, um, you know, for the environment. So it's great to see that Everton took that as an essential and important part of it. Uh, and infilling that site is probably going to be one of the harder jobs. Um, so it's good, it's good that they're sort of getting underway in the next couple of months. Uh, finally, we have the news that Everton eye another Maitland-Niles move. Uh, Everton are reportedly strongly interested in a move for Ainsley Maitland-Niles and according to a report, will make another move for him in the winter transfer window. This is according to Transfer, uh, transfer Market Web, who are reporting that the Blues remain keen on adding Maitland-Niles to their squad, although he wouldn't be joining them as a midfielder. The report goes on to claim that the Blues see the 24-year-old as an ideal replacement for Seamus Coleman and Rafael Benitez says is confident the international suits his game. Um... <laughs> he was going to be okay in the summer <clears throat> after we'd sort of messed out on Dumfries I'd really have liked us to wait till the summer and go get Max Ahrens maybe that's still a case because you can't just live with one right back at the club and John Joe Kenny's not up for it I'd still hope we push for Max Ahrens in the summer if, if Norwich go when Norwich go down I believe Maitland Niles would be a good stopgap um, and then would be a good backup to, me, uh, to Max Ahrens in the future 
ideally that's I'd like it, but it looks like Benitez is probably going to get him and then change his um, sort of move on, his in attention to the squad to some other position. Rumoured to be centre-back, he doesn't rate the centre-back, but he's not got a perfect centre-back partnership, according to reports, although I believe that's Mina and Godfrey. Um, yeah, if we don't get Max Ahrens, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'd be a little bit disappointed. But Maitland-Niles, I mean, at, he's achievable. Um, they kept him there against sort of what he wishes. Arteta hasn't played him. They went and brought um, Tommy Yasso, who plays at right back slash centre back. And I think if he doesn't play or start playing from now to January, he's going to put in his transfer request and really try and force his way out of the club. Um, and that will play into our hands. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, though, if Arteta's done a turnaround on his view on Maitland-Niles um, and depends on the price as well, obviously. But that is all we've got time for today. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and comment down below on anything I've discussed today. You might disagree with me on my eh, somewhat scathing report of Longstaff. Um, you might think he's a great player who fit in. Um, you might prefer Maitland-Niles to Aaron's. Let me know down below on that. Um, you might, you might think that we might pipe uh, Diaz off um, Barcelona. If, if you disagree with that, let me know. Um, and let me know what you think about the Bramley Moore update. I think it's a big move and a big update and something a bit positive. Um, but yeah, don't forget to let me know all that down below. And most importantly, stay safe.